It was through the Ardennes forest that the German army came on May 10, 1940, invading Luxembourg and eventually Belgium, the Netherlands, and France. The invasion of the Low Countries, as it is known, was so powerful and swift that Luxembourg surrendered after just one day of fighting. Quickly, the German army gave way to Nazi rule, and life changed overnight. There was, you know, there was a Germanization that was taking place, and the, and the people in Luxembourg didn't want it, didn't want to go along with it. The native language, Luxembourgish, was outlawed. Only German could be spoken now. The Germans dug in and let the U.S. soldiers come to them, inflicting 80% Allied casualties in the first two weeks of the fight, which began in September of 1944. The soldiers called the forest a meat grinder for the amount of men sent in who later came out either dead or wounded. So this is so these guys were battle hardened. They'd been they'd been just destroyed in this battle. They needed they needed some some downtime. And this was their downtime. Soon after arriving in Wilts, Stutz recognized that the past 4 years under German occupation had been very difficult on the people who lived there especially the children. Somber-looking women and children made up the majority of the local population. As Christmas 1944 approached, Harry Stutz, who was Jewish, had been hearing about Wiltz's St. Nicholas Day and the legend of Decletion. He had befriended um, somebody in town and had found out through just talking with them that this event was coming up, the St. Nicholas Day, and that, um, that the town really didn't have any way of celebrating it. They wouldn't, of course, celebrate St. Nicholas Day because it would be the first time in five years that they'd been able to, but they didn't have much because of the German occupation and the, and the trials and horrors of war to celebrate with. So Harry um, was touched by this and decided, well, it, there has to be something that we can do. So he uh, got this idea of having a, a Christmas party. It was for the town, but it was also for the, the uh, for the soldiers as well, because they knew they weren't going to be uh, home for Christmas. And so they thought, well, what if we had a bit of a Christmas party? The sun may not have been out on that chilly day in the middle of World War II, but Wilts was a glow in the warmth and anticipation of their first St. Nicholas celebration since 1939. A U.S. Army Signal Corps film camera was there to capture the moments as they unfolded. Before the party that night at the castle, there would be a visit by Corporal Richard Brookins, a.k.a. Decletion, to a couple of the schools in Wilts. Two young angels, 11-year-old schoolgirls Lilian Wampuk and Janice Schliemer, would accompany St. Nick and hold his flowing cape during the pre-party festivities. A U.S. Army Jeep would serve as their sleigh. And then... As I got into the role a little bit, the uh, uh, ham, I guess, I, I knew enough German to ask a youngster his name. And I couldn't even tell you what he said in return, but I'd respond to it and I'd pat him on the head and chuck him under the chin and smile. The mood was very festive, despite a very light freezing rain. The cooks of the 28th had made donuts. Candy was also passed out. Gifts and packages sent to the soldiers from loved ones back home were also donated to the St. Nicholas party. What was never forgotten by the people there was that December day in 1944, when some American soldiers brought back the tradition of St. Nicholas to their community. The soldiers of the 28th Infantry Division had restored hope and faith to a community that had suffered greatly from years of German occupation. They vowed that they would, they would always remember this group of soldiers in this event, and they, to this day they have. 